Hi, I'm Georgia. And I'm Simone. And welcome to episode 58 of the Hope Book Club podcast. This episode, we're going to choose two books on our TBR that we're really excited to read and share them with you. Sim, why don't we start with you? So my first book is The Murder Rule by Dervla Matiernan. It's sort of a complicated story centering on like a young woman, Hannah, who is a law student. She's very single-minded, resourceful, clever, you know, all those good things, but with somewhat of an erratic moral compass. <laughs> so... <laughs> As all good crime novels uh, start with. Yeah. And so after blackmailing her way into an organisation called The Innocence Project, uh, it's clear from the outset that Hannah's motives have very little to do with exonerating innocent people and everything to do with vengeance. Oh, okay. I love crime novels that have kind of, yeah, morally grey characters because it's not necessarily like you want to like them but they're just so interesting that you can't stop reading about them you don't know what they're going to do next yeah so like that's kind of what I'm a little bit excited for because she is like a complicated character is sort of what they're saying and I feel like this author writes those really well so have you read a lot of Devil of McTinn and stuff because I've started The Ruin I think I've read like two chapters and then for some reason it got abandoned (laughs) But that's my introduction to her. But I know that a lot of people love her stuff. Yes, yeah, so I loved her. Like it's the Cormac Riley series, which that The Ruin is part of. I loved that series. And so like I'm kind of excited as well because it's like a standalone, which is a first for her. But also like as I heard someone sort of say about this recently, they said it's like when you get something you love but in like a different colour or flavour. <laughs> And so that makes me excited. Like I, I'm like, yes, like I love when I find the perfect thing and I can just get it in multiple different things. I was going to say, so you know basically what you're getting because you have read a whole bunch of her stuff. It's just going to be slightly different and you'll still be surprised in a good way. Yeah. And that's what I love. Like it's still a different flavor. It's still a different color. Like it's different, but you, you can kind of go in with that knowledge of like, I know her writing, her writing is good. Like, so that's, yes, that's why I think I'm excited for it. So what books kind of are similar? Obviously you mentioned the the Cormac Riley series. So pretty much anything by Dervla McTiernan, I'm sure will probably prepare you for this book, but what, are there any other authors? So on Goodreads, it did say that like a lot of people who liked this book also like Jane Harper. Oh uh, yeah. So I think it's got that kind of vibe. That pipeline of Devla McTiernan to Jane Harper is very strong, for sure. My first book, uh, less of a crime novel, um, a little bit lighter, still got some hard themes. It is called Mary's Last Dance by Mary Lee. Now, you may not have heard of this one, but I guarantee you've probably heard of Mao's Last Dancer uh, by Lee Swing Sin. It was a very famous book about 15 years ago uh, about Lee, uh, his memoir. He was a boy from a poor village in China. He got chosen um, one of like 12 people in the whole country for a rigorous dance academy. And it was basically his ticket out of poverty. He had to move away from his family. He was like 11 and he learned to dance and he ended up becoming a professional dancer. He shares his story from this village to eventually moving to Australia, uh, moving all over the world, being part of these professional ballets. But Mary is his wife. So she is also um, a ballet dancer. They met while they were both dancing at the Houston Ballet. So she's mentioned a lot in the book, but it is her untold story of her life and career because they fell in love. They soon became the darlings of the ballet world. They had their first daughter, Sophie. Everything was great. And then right at the height of her international career as a dancer, Mary disappeared from view. It was it. And she is finally ready to tell her story as to kind of what happened and I guess her role in this whole, you know, life of Lee Swing Sin and this incredibly famous, almost traumatic journey that they've both been on together. Um, and yeah, she's ready to share that in this memoir. So I'm really excited for that one. Have you actually read Mao's Last Answer? I haven't, but I love the mystery of like, you sort of know the story, but you don't know her perspective. And also it's like the next, it's like delving deeper into the story. Yeah. And I think, I think you as a former dancer, Sim, you will 
adore this because I used to dance as well. So reading this while I was still dancing, it was just, it was a beautiful story. And this one has actually been on my TBR for a couple of years. It's not a new book or anything like that. Uh, It was a Christmas present from my mum because Mal's Last Dancer was genuinely one of my favorite books as a child. Like I read this cover to cover so many times, really recommend the film adaptation as well, um, which is brilliant. But one thing I'm really excited for in general is memoirs obviously center a singular person. That's the how they're kind of, I guess, set up to be. And there's nothing wrong with that. But reading Mao's Last Dancer, I wanted to know more about these other characters. I wanted to know more about Mary. I wanted to know more about her role in Lee's story. So the ability to be able to, yeah, read her story now, I'm I'm really excited. I'm really excited for. I always love when you can delve into, yeah, more characters. Do you think, like, what kind of books do you think that'll be like? I know it'll probably be like, you know. Mouse, Mouse Last, Last Dancer, Dancer for sure. Mouse Last Dancer, I would just recommend you reading first if you're planning to read this because it sets up the whole scene beautifully. It's kind of an assumed knowledge kind of situation. Um, but if you're looking for other memoirs um, that kind of have hard traumatic themes but also a sense of hope, um, I would recommend The Happiest Refugee by Arne Doe, an absolutely beautiful memoir from him. Also, The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jaku, who was um, survived the Holocaust and only recently passed away, but uh, lived in Australia for many years, was a guide at the Sydney Jewish Museum. My sister actually saw him talk at a school excursion. So incredible stuff, really hard themes, um, but just that sense of hope and positivity and resilience throughout all those books. That's awesome. All right, Sim, second book for you, number two. So for my second book, I've gone a little lighter. I wanted something that like I, when you read sort of something quite big and crime and kind of deep, right, I love to then balance that out with something easy and light. It's like a palate cleanser. (laughs) Yes. And so um, my second book that's on like my TBR at the moment that's probably going to be after is The Banned Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson. I have genuinely never heard of this book, ever. (laughs) It's not the most well-known one, but I kind of went looking for something that was like, yeah, a little lighthearted, but not, but like romance without it just being like fluffy romance. Sure. And so this is sort of where like Maggie Banks arrives to a small town with a famously bookish history um, to run her best friend's struggling bookstore. And she expects to be able to just sell books like, you know, bestsellers and all of that kind of thing. But the town's literary society insists on keeping the bookstore in the past. Oh. And so to help save the store, she starts an underground book club. But while trying to keep it secret and quiet and like, you know, sell stuff, it's almost impossible and becomes even harder when she unearths a town secret that could upend everything. It's like a cozy mystery. Right? I love it. With romance. Do you think <laughs> we could make Hope Book Club more secretive by going underground, I reckon? That would give us an air of mystery. It would. Um, we've kind of jumped the gun that we already have like 58 episodes. Is that? that yeah, I, f- I feel like we're already knowing. Look, you know, if we want to go like fully underground, you can still join the Hope, like the Facebook group. That's a little, yeah, that's little the, exclusive. That's the underground. So, yeah, I'm excited. I love stories like with romance, but characters who like challenge rules. I love a little bit of anarchy and <laughs> like rebellion with my romance. Like That is so cool. And I feel like this will be interesting as well from the perspective of like old kind of, you know, classic, wanting to keep things and, and resisting change um, while also trying to bring something new and, and, and bring in those sort of changes that are needed while respecting I think what's gone behind before it'll be interesting to see how that kind of gets balanced. Well, that's also just the story of real life, isn't it? We're yeah. constantly doing that, and even if you look at the you know political landscape at the moment, quite literally that that <laughs> the title has banned bookshop in it. And we're looking at you know books being banned and this whole situation over in the states at the moment. I think it's really important to to juggle that, obviously respecting the past and acknowledging history, but also moving forward. Absolutely. And I think like it'll be interesting to see like, you know, how do they kind of deal with or how does this author deal with that while keeping it very much about sort of like the, like you said, the mystery and the, you know, moving things along while also falling in, you know, the main character falling in love, presumably, Mm. since it is classed as a romance. I hope so. (laughs) 
All right, what books, because I haven't heard of this one, what books do you reckon could be similar? It gave me some Waddle Island book club vibes, you oh, know, like from, from our first live event. Yes. Um, you know, I definitely think it's a lot more lighthearted than that one and sort of more focused on the romance, but there's sort of that mystery to unearth and kind of a new person coming into a town with a love um, or, you know, relationship to books. So I think there's sort of probably a bit of that. And um, the Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore um, and The Littlest Library by Poppy Alexander is sort of ones that I've heard it's it's fairly similar to. Basically, if it has book in the title. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If it's about a bookstore or a book club or a group of people like – you know, either loving or hating books to begin with and then loving. Um, I have heard it's also kind of like better than fiction because Maggie doesn't really, she's not a huge book lover at the beginning oh, of this book. And she's a convert. So she is a bit of a convert with this. And so um, that sort of makes me think of better than fiction by Alexa Martin, which is also high on my TBR list. Okay. All right. I'm excited. I've also chosen uh, a lighter one for my second book. And I only found this this week. I did not even know this book was coming, but Sophie Green has a brand new novel out. That woman... I don't know how she writes so quickly. Didn't she just, I swear, <laughs> her last book came out like less than a year ago. Amazing. Uh, it is called Weekends with the Sunshine Gardening Society. Uh, it centers, once again, as all of her books do, around female friendship, um, the perspectives of multiple women. So this one is set in Noosa in 1987 and four women join a local gardening club. Uh, Cynthia is newly divorced. She's returned to her hometown uh, from LA to reconnect with her 19-year-old pregnant daughter who is determined not to listen to her mother. Cynthia's former best friend Lorraine, uh, she has been stuck in a rut, in a cycle, a lawn mowing business that was her husband's dream and not hers and she wants to get out basically. They convince each other to join this local gardening club and there they meet Elizabeth who's a young widow and heartbroken Kathy and the four of them form a little bit of an alliance and they find that um, they have a lot more to talk about than flowers and plants and they basically find their way into each other's lives and help each other through stuff. Sounds very Sophie Green, um, which, you know, is always a classic, always a good read. I do love the um, 1987. That's a bit of a blast from the past. It's very cool. I have to ask, were you even alive yet? I was not. This was set <laughs> nine years before I was born. So okay. this, will, this will be a nice little surprise. You'll get surprise. a little glimpse. Whereas, you know, I'll be remembering like, you know, being a small child <laughs> in a country town in Australia in 1987. So... It, yeah, we'll need to discuss this one after we've read it, I think. Probably. <laughs> Although I, I must say I'm a little bit prepared um, because my favourite of Sophie Green's books, which was Thursdays at Orange Blossom House, that was set in the early 90s in Queensland. So uh, yeah. just a few years. I'm slowly going back in time. Eventually I'll get to like the 40s and 50s when she does her like 15th book. I reckon she's just going to continue going back. So in like what, two years? <laughs> Right? It's, oh, this woman is amazing. Um, obviously, if you like Sophie Green, uh, you will like this book. Uh, and any of her books are fantastic. Uh, probably the most famous one is the Shelley Bay Lady Swimming Circle. Um, but like I said, I really like Those Days at Orange Blossom House. That was two books ago. And then her latest before this one was Bellbird River Country Choir, which I've heard is really good as well. We actually did that one for a live event a little while ago with Katrina. And so. I think Sophie herself actually came on the she did. Oh, we might need to get her back as an, as an encore. Mm. Um, I would also like to do a little throwback to our first episode and say that The Garden of Hopes and Dreams by Barbara Hane, probably going to be very similar in style to this and once again about a garden. So I think it's clear we really just choose books about books or books about gardens and I think that's our personality. Yeah, funnily enough, um, I love reading about gardens. I'm <laughs> terrible at it. I have so many dead plants in my house. So, so many. Seriously, if you go onto my balcony right now, it is, it's actually a plant graveyard. It's a plant cemetery. I need to like do a little memorial for them because it's like the dead of winter. Everything is cold and sad and just kind of a little bit broken. So I need to revitalize. Maybe I need to read this book to learn how to garden. Well, look, we've got the, the book thing down. If there's any listeners out there who 
like get had the gardening thing down as well, maybe we just need to get some advice. Yes, if you could jump on our Facebook group, that would be amazing. Uh, we would actually genuinely love you to be a part of our community. You can join our Facebook group for more conversation. Uh, also to find out which book we'll be reviewing next, that'll be up in a pinned post right now on our, our Facebook group. Uh, you can just search for Hope Book Club on Facebook. That information is always in the show notes as well. And we'd also love this podcast to reach more people. So you can rate, review, subscribe, uh, share it with some fr- some friends. Just send them a link to this episode if you think someone you know will like it. That's a really great way to, to grow the community as well. And it's how we've seen this community, especially this Facebook group, grow so fast in the last few weeks and months. People just sharing it with their friends um, and, you know, it, in, enjoying the episodes, which we are really proud of and really love to see. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, until then, stay reading. We will catch you next time. Sim, I believe you've got a quote to end on. I do from novelist, teacher and journalist Liam Callanan. Every book in a bookstore is a fresh beginning. Every book is the next iteration of a very old story. Every bookstore, therefore, is like a safe deposit box for civilization. <laughs> <laughs>